I'd like to ask you a whole bunch of questions about uh, pumps used in the offshore arena. To start with, what are some of the typical requirements from end users? So the oil and gas industry demands for very good, well-engineered and reliable products and not on the product itself, even to the suppliers. Okay, uh, so question number two, what exactly is meant by gas locking? Gas locking is um, a situation where a gas bubble stay in a pump and this should be uh, avoided because on uh, the process the gas should be forwarded to from A to B. And what's meant by low shear? Low shear is a um, um, situation which should be uh, avoided because on um, uh, separation processes where you, for example, want to separate oil from water, um, the customers are looking for pump solutions uh, with low shear effect. So when and why is a low NPSH important? NPSH is a um, situation where you want to lift usually liquids from lower levels, so you want to lift it and NPSH is an indicator of a situation on site as well as capability of the pumps. And what about viscosity? Is that an, uh, an important issue offshore? For sure, the um, applications are very diff different from very low viscosity ranges like condensates up to very high viscosities of crude oils and dewatered oil sludge cakes, for example. So here's my uh, sixth and final question. I know your field of expertise is the progressive cavity pump. So what are some of the typical applications for this pump type? Typical applications for progressive cavity pumps are um, drainage uh, applications or separation of oil and gas uh, and water uh, mixtures, condensates, multi-phase liquids with gases or drilling muds in up, up and downstream processes.